All right, I got here a 2010 Hyundai Accent. Um, the customer complaint is that there's an O2 code that comes on for the downstream O2 sensor, saying it's just a circuit code. It's not on right now because we cleared the codes before. Pretty much when I got here the first time, the wiring to the O2 right over here was just sitting there. I don't know, it was all messed up, it was together. So I just put connectors on it just temporarily, just to see. And the shop replaced the O2 sensor, and they called me back saying they have the same codes, and the system's also running very rich. So now it's not running rich either because the car warmed up. It's when it's cold, and th so the downstream O2 sensor doesn't move at all. And they put a new one on, they even put a second one on, and it's just staying at point, uh, four, six, 460 millivolts, which I'm assuming just a biased voltage because with the car off, it's doing the same thing. All right, so let me just see. I'm just doing a pre scan. All right, so we have no codes. We have a code in the SRS. Battery voltage low. Okay, just make a report. Okay, so we have no codes in the system right now. Let's go in the ECM. I really want to go into. Let's read data stream. Let's see what we got here. Short term. Bank one sensor two, action sensor bank one sensor one. Short term field trim. Long term field trim. Load and um, what else? So the car was just running for a long time, so it's warmed up now. Engine load. Engine speed I want. Okay, let's just do this enough for now. Did I get long term trim yet? Yeah. All right, let's see what we have. Okay. So long-term trim is negative 15 at load. And at idle, sorry, idle load. Okay, part load is at, is good, and this is negative 15. But, but they're both at 4.6. Both O2 sensors are at 0.46 volts. I'm going to start the car now. All right. So... Bank one sensor one starts going down right away. Now it's going up. Short term is, you know, long term is still pretty negative. It is running rich. I mean, it does look like it's running rich. Engine speed's still high. Engine coolant's at 167. All right, see, so this O2 sensor, bank one sensor one, is perfect. It's oscillating from it's oscillating from wrist to lean like it's supposed to. Now this one is stuck at four six. I'm just gonna give some throttle. Short term goes positive. All right, well we got to figure out why this sensor is not moving. It's a new sensor. It's like I don't know if it's OE or it's a good brand sensor. Um. All right, so let me go do some checks at the wiring. Just look at a diagram first. All right, I got here a diagram pulled up. So right here is the oxygen sensor, the downstream. There's four wires. We got a blue and a pink. We're, okay, so this is the sensor part of it right here. And this is the heater. So there's no heater code, so I'm assuming that's good. Now the sensor signal is the blue wire and the ground is the pink wire. So I'm just gonna go, um, do I need the car on? I do need the car on. Let me just go unplug it. While I look at my tool. You know, I'm just put key on engine off. I don't need it running. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, so here's the wire. It's going down. I'm just going to stick my hand down and unplug it. Okay, so I got this out. Um, all right, so we got here the pink and the blue. One's the signal, one's the ground. So I'm going to get a test light. I hook it to battery negative. If I hit a positive, it lights off. Okay, good. So now... All right, so we got here, bank one sensor two. This is the blue wire. I'm gonna touch it with through a test light to ground. 
and if you see on the scan tool, it goes down to the ground. So the signal wire integrity is good. Now I'm just going to make sure the handle. I'm switching the polarity to positive. If I touch the ground, it lights up. So now I'm going to touch the blue wire again. And it goes to whatever, 1.13 volts, which is probably just the highest it can go to. So, meaning the signal wire is good. But I'm getting absolutely nothing from the sensor. Hmm. So, wait, what else is it? It needs a ground wire. So, the pink, I think, is the ground. Let's check. The. Yeah, sensor ground is the pink wire. Okay. So, let's check. It is coming from the computer, but I'm just gonna, I'm assuming I'm hooked to battery positive. If I touch, I should get, it should light up if I hit this ground right here, the pink wire. Ooh, I get nothing. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to bypass test this first just to make sure. Right, I'm going to plug this back in. And I'm going to, this is the pink wire right here. I'm just going to check at this wire. I'm going to give it a ground and see if we get anything on the scan tool. Okay. I got the sensor plugged back in. Um, I'm going to pierce this wire right here, this pink wire. Okay, I'm going to pierce this wire. All right, so just taking the jumper wire. Connecting it to here. Let me get a clip. I'm just going to hook it straight to battery ground. All right. Oh, you know what? I think this is not good. But let me just get a different piercing probe. I feel like it's not making contact in the back, but... Okay, we got a different piercing probe. It's not connecting to my jumper wire. All right, that felt much better. Let's see. Okay. Go back and forth. I'm gonna give it a second to warm up. There we go. It's starting to move. 48. It's definitely working somewhat. This is bank one. And you see we're short term, we're long term negative seven. I don't know what the oh one's part low is okay. There's definitely something happening here. I'm gonna give it another minute. Uh, I'm just going to go to generic OBD. Alright, thank one. So here we are at 52. So it's definitely working somewhat. And the fuel trims are definitely getting better. Back away from the car so you can hear me. Yeah, it's definitely working. Actually, this thing's missing the ground. Now, this thing is grounded through the computer. Let me just get some revs. Yeah, it's definitely responding now. All right, so this thing needs a ground. All right, so let me go check at the computer if we have a ground, and we'll know if it's a broken wire or not, or a bad computer. All right, so it's this connector over here because it has more pins. It goes on a bigger connector. So let me see how to get this off. I think this slides out. Okay, so it is pin number, let me look at this, it's pin number nine, the pink wire, after a blue, so pin number one. All 
All right, it's labeled right here. That's pin number one. And that's pin number 789. Okay, this is pink wire right here. All right, so I'm just going to pierce this wire at the connector. Okay, got this wire pierced. I'm going to stick this back on. Now let's just test with the test light if it's grounded. Okay, hook up a test light to battery positive. If I touch the ground, it lights up. Okay, now does this light up? And it does, but, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is a mistake because I still have my other wire over here jumpered. So, I'm going to disconnect this over here and it goes out. So it tells us two things. The wire integrity from here till there is good and I don't think this computer is giving out anything, but let me just turn the car on just to make sure it's not only on with the car on. Alright. We have no ground there. Just want to reconnect. Okay. So we got oxygen sensor output voltage is at 46 again and now I'm touching with the test light from battery positive and it goes up so we see that wire integrity is good all the way through and there's no ground there's no ground from this thing hmm so let me get a ground over here just to make sure that we're fixed Point four four, so something happened. Uh, I forgot this this connection is in here is no good. Or I'm gonna switch it back to the other one. I really gotta throw this out because I keep using it again. I thought it was a different one. All right. <laughs> Okay, so now it's grounded. Let's see. Open it up. Four nine. It's definitely something happening. Let me just rev the engine a little bit. There we go. Uh, it's definitely responsive now. Okay, so now all I have to do is I have to check power and grounds, or actually just grounds to this computer, just to make sure. So I'm just going to check grounds here really quickly. So I got a headlight bulb. And let's just get this. There's just four grounds. Clip that to that. They're all right here in the beginning. There's four black wires right here. I gotta move that to power. All right. Okay, that's one. Then two. That's three. I'll just unplug this guy so I get to the last one. And that's four. All right, all the grounds are good. This computer is. Um, this computer is bad. It's internally the ground's missing from it. The question is, I'm just going to speak to the uh, customer. Okay, I spoke to the shop owner and he just wants me to run ground from, to this wire. I'm just going to jump it straight to this wire right here, one of these big grounds, and it should be grounded the whole time. All right, I'm going to do that. One thing I just want to show is that the pin tension is actually good. So it's this one right here, seven, eight, nine. 
and there's definitely pin tension. It's the same as the one next to it. So I'm not, not worried about this pin at all. All right, I jumped the two wires. I put everything back. Let's just make sure we're fixed. All right, starts up. We reconnect. Okay. Let's grasp this. All right, this one started awakening, but this one takes longer to heat up because it's in the back. All right, okay, so it definitely warmed up after a few minutes. So hold it at, let's say I'm at 2,000 RPM now. It's holding pretty steady. We see how let go it went lead. So it's working now. It's doing what it should do. Fuel trims are perfect. Um, yeah, I think that's a fix. All right. Thanks for watching.